What's up guys, it's Steve the Graphics Guy and today I'm gonna to show you how I made these 200 decals. And we go from printing to laminating to cutting them out on the Suma and packaging. So let's get started. All right, so let's get the artwork set up here. This is the artwork and this is the proof I sent to the client shows the exact size, the corners, uh, where the cut line is going to be on this magenta, which is probably hard for you to see. Um, so what I'm going to do is grab this file, plop a copy over here, which is what I already started to do, but I will just show you from the beginning. So I'm going to clear off that magenta line that little stroke there. And I'm gonna select the black, which is my border. And I'm going to outline that a quarter inch outline. And that's gonna be my bleed. So that's already set to black. I'm gonna separate the outline, select that again. And I'm gonna go to effects contour cut. And I'm gonna select the cutout knife multiple. That's gonna be my double edge cutter on the Suma. I'm gonna hit the check mark to apply that. And now this is ready to go. So I'm gonna be printing on 60 inch material. So I'm gonna set up a box here that's 57 in width. And cause I wanna see how many I can get width wise. Um, on this sheet or on this roll media. So I can do 21 in width. And that means I need to do 10 in height and that will give me 210 prints and I only need a quantity of 200. So we'll apply that. I'll get rid of this box. And now I'm gonna select all I'm gonna do control H for rip and print. And I have this pretty much centered on the media here. It's gonna take just over 100 inches and under 104. Um, so I'm going to click send after I make sure I have the right print profile in here which I do, and it's set to send it to the cutter as well. I'm gonna hit send, and this is going to head off to the printer. If I pull open production manager here, it is ripping right now on this side of things. And it is warming up the temperature now. You can see it's 176 and climbing. And it's looking to get to 230 degrees Fahrenheit before we begin to print. It's going to get the print heads warmed up. It's going to get everything warmed up, ready to go. Side note, testing out the GoPro Media Mod with the lav mic. I hope that the audio is a lot better. I really hope that these lights aren't flickering in the background because that has been such a huge problem in the past, which I think is mainly when I do strictly time lapses. So I don't know if that's the issue, but that's where I've noticed it. So I hope that it gets a little bit better. I'm not sure why that just stopped recording. That was really weird. Anyway, the printer's moving.
Now that the stickers are printed, we are going to go into substrate. We're gonna click on the scissors, cut these off of the machine. Since this is a pretty small run, I'm just going to release the take up and pull these out. So there's really no need to really no need to pull out that whole thing, undo it, take this off, put it back together. So that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna reset that so it's ready for next time. So I am going to get the overlaminate, which in this case is 3M's 8518. I failed to mention the print film is 3M IJ180 CV3. I've mentioned this on the channel before, but I do a lot of smaller runs, as you can see. And with smaller runs and different jobs come different laminates. So I tend not to wind the laminate through the laminator unless I'm specifically doing a long job that I know is all the same laminate and I'm convinced that it'll take less time if I wind it through. But the majority of these jobs different laminates, smaller runs. So I tend to do it this way. Other people might think that that's not a great idea, but that's the way I do it. And not everyone has to do it the way that I do it. And I don't have to do it the way everyone else does it. So, I always use a straight edge while I'm doing this so that next time where I'm running the tape hinge, it's perfectly straight. I don't have to worry about any issues there. So I'm not sure if you could have, if you saw that, but you'll see it in a second. So what I did up on this top edge is just created this hinge with masking tape. And now roll this up. I'm gonna feed this into the laminator. I'm gonna set the roller down, make sure the machine's turned on. Set the roller down, pressure's on high. I'm gonna flip that out. So I can kind of separate the print media from the laminate. And I have this box here on the ground that keeps the print film off of the floor. I really want to upgrade this to something a little bit softer, but I mean the cardboard, it does work and it has been working. So if it's not broken, why fix it? Just kidding. I am always trying to improve things. So that's why I've been thinking about that. So pull the first 
eight inches of laminate up or so, get it set up on the core. And one thing I'm missing is a yellow towel. Yellow towel. So get this set up. I'm gonna start to run. Right now I'm still holding on to the foot pedal. While I get this going. But now I'm gonna release. I'm gonna release the foot pedal. And I'm gonna start wiping. Making sure that these prints are extremely clean going through the laminator. We don't want any junk of fuzz or dust. Any of that nonsense getting in there, if we can prevent it. There's a lot of static here today, so that's usually not that messy. But luckily that worked out. And here's what it looks like coming out the other end. Normally it just feeds right along the table, but sometimes, sometimes when the static is too much, it just kind of pulls itself in. So that's okay. We're working with it. So now that this is laminated, I will, sometimes there's a little extra on the edge. Maybe the laminate was like a little bit bigger. I'm gonna cut that out of there. Get rid of that. So the way the Suma barcodes work is that the rear number always ends in a five and the front number ends in a zero. I also know because of the way the print is oriented, I always try to do it so that you could read the text from the front. And I also have the color bar over on the, the right hand side. So that kind of helps me orient things too. Realistically, this entire thing could get put in backwards and it would be fine because it's a, the exact same thing. All right. So. Get this roll set up here. Loaded in the back of the Suma. Up front, I'm going to line it up with these marks so it's in the right position. When we go to get the camera on the registration marks, it's pretty straight. So, in Go produce. This is my file and it read the registration marks, it read the through cut. I'm going to change the knife to the double edge cutter. I'm actually going to pop the single edge blade in here because that's going to be a better cutter suitable for this. So I'm going to change tool. So I'm gonna change the tool. So I'm gonna take out the double edge cutter. You just push in the button on the front here with my thumb, and then you're able to unscrew this tool. 
and that comes out. And then there's this little notch or peg, and that goes into a notch on this side. So I'm gonna drop that in, press the button on the front again. Tighten it down. Nice and tight. And now that tool should be ready to go. So we're gonna press online. And the machine is going to read the barcode that's printed on the tool. And then it's also going to uh, check the depth of the blade in the automatic depth control, the ADC right there with the red light. So it's actually measuring, it's shooting that beam across and it's measuring how far down that blade is. All right, now that the blade depth is set we are going to go back into go produce through cut is on the single edge tool and we're going to output to sheet All right, so we've made it into the shipping department and this is where I pack everything. So I said I did 200 of these, which I did. And 
I, when I was pulling them off the machine, I put them in stacks first of 25, just so it's easy to count. And then I put them in stacks of 50. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is shrink wrap them in these packs of 50. And then it's a better way, one, for me to show the customer that I actually counted and it's the right amount. And two, when the customer starts going through these and they're, you know, they have one pack left, they know they have 25 or 50 and they know that they need to reorder at whatever their minimum, you know, amount on hand is. And maybe they don't have one, but I'm probably gonna encourage them to set one so that they don't run out of these and they have plenty to keep their manufacturing going. So um, I'm just kind of doing these one at a time, getting them in there nice and tight, making sure everything's even and nice, getting good sealed edges. And then after this, we're gonna shrink everything down with a heat gun. And then we'll get them in a box. start warming that heat gun up. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get toasty. And I guess it knows that it's laying on the ground so it turned off. That's good. I didn't know that it did that. There we go. Oh, it really knows. Or either that or it's broken. I'm really not sure which. All right, so once these are shrunk, I try to make sure that all the decals are in a really nice stack. So when I shrink them, they stay in that really nice stack. And everything's neat and uniform. I always do the edges first. Turn this up. I always do the edges first, get those set. Do the front, I do the back. And I typically come back to the front, hit the edges one more time. Make sure everything's real nice. So hopefully. Yeah. So get everything stacked up nice, kind of hold it on the top. Get the edges good, get the top looking good, bottom tight. Boom, that's what it looks like. All right, 200 labels, ready to go in a box. So this is actually what they go on. These go 
inside of what would you call it um the thing that controls the traffic signals this goes inside there huge box this is just one of many things but this is actually the power panel for them and they have different configurations depending on the needs of each one um, but these decals go on the face here and then depending on the configuration they cut out whatever they need um, they always cut out the outlet down here but they said it's easier for them to cut it out once it's on there so i just made these solid and so i'm gonna find a box where i can put all of this in so this is gonna have to be a 12 by 12. I wish I had, I do have an 18 by 24 box, but that's kind of ridiculous for this. But they are more flat. Hmm. I'm not sure which one really costs more dimensionally, but it's okay. So I'm going to take out the unbranded tape and get some branded tape in here. And the box is 12, so we're going to pull a 20. Make sure that wet tape is on there real good. Get some brown paper in there. This just kind of fits perfect into this power panel, which is nice. Get some more brown paper. Do I have any other filler? I do a filler. So one thing I always do is keep a box of filler that I get from other packages. That's like still decent. And it looks like my paper. And uh, I'm gonna put one more. Now I'm running out of filler. Put some more at the bottom here. Could I have cut this box down? Yeah, maybe, but I don't typically do that. All right, now I just have to write a thank you note and then we'll be good to go. Good to package it up. Thank you note. So, where are the coasters? Where did I put those? Oh, right there. So, something I like to do, what else do I have? I don't have much else. One thing I like to do 
with maybe new customers or people, new people within existing customers. If that makes any sense. Um, not that one. Not that one. Is give them a little bit of swag. In this case, I have some custom printed coasters. I got a couple pens. So I'm gonna seal this up. Get this looking nice first. I'll show you what I do here. But first, I need a stapler. I like to get thank you note on top of coasters and some pens, a little freebie for them. Put that right on top, and it's going to be the first thing they see when they open this box. Let some know that we appreciate them. We're thinking about them. And they are the people that help our business grow. So, box is boxed up. I find an appropriately sized precision sticker for the top corner. Make sure I don't mess up the edges. Get it on there nice and straight. Looking fresh. And then I'm going to print out a shipping label for this and get it out the door. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. And before you leave, hit me with a like. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching.